So passivity by output selection is a possibility, okay, as long as your system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov. Know. Okay, so great. So there is at least some hope. Now, uh, like I said, what happens when you, know, you don't have you know um, a stable in the sense of Lyapunov system? Okay, um, then you go for what is called feedback passivation. Okay, you try to use the feedback to get passivity. That's the idea. Okay, so what is the deal? We are now not making any assumptions on this guy. What we are saying is, uh, you have this input output system, we are already specifying the output also in this case, all right. Um, the output of course might come from here, the previous method itself, but now we are no longer saying that there is you know some kind of, uh, you know there is any, any uh, stability in the sense of Lyapunov for this system, yeah, because which is what we assume for the uh, first, first case. But we assume there exists some, uh, you know, uh, feedback. Okay, so we are. What are we going to do? We are going to um, sort of plug in a feedback in the system. Okay. Now the question is, what is this feedback doing? Of course, we have to ask. Uh, once we plug this in, uh, and again, this is this material is sort of taken from Khalil, right? But uh, there it is. A lot of it is stated as theorems and proofs and all that. I'm not doing that. I'm doing it more uh, in a step-by-step -step way so that we figure out what's happening. Yeah. So as usual, we assume all the Lipschitz smoothness and all the nice things. Then what am I doing? What I am doing is I am going, I am just proposing some feedback. If you notice, this is a pretty general structure for a feedback. It is not, there is nothing very specific or special about it. What did I do? I broke the feedback into one term and then another term which contains some additional thing that I can play with, I can sort of prescribe later on. Okay. So I have taken this control and I have reduced it to this control, okay. So, but, but as far as we are concerned, these are pretty much equivalent, as general as it gets. It is some function of x, another function of x multiplied by new control, as simple. Now, what is the advantage? Of course, we are as usual assuming some more lip shades and smoothness and all that for, I mean, just to keep things simple, let us assume everything is smooth anyway, yeah. Uh, if you substitute this control back here, you are going to get this sort of an expression, okay. And I have done nothing but substitute the control here. Now, if it so happens that this system is passive in Vy, then the system is said to be feedback passive, okay. But uh, again, looks very general and looks like it is not going to help us at all, but it is because we just, we are just trying to generalize this situation. We are going to use this control somehow to, uh, you know, sort of give a feedback term, right? This will sort of, uh, you know, plug in a feedback term, and this feedback term is potentially going to make this, you know, Lipschitz, uh, sorry, make this stable, and then you can sort of choose this y, and so on. Okay, so this is one step beyond what we have here. Okay, that's the idea here. That's the idea. Yeah. And this is called feedback passivation is more like a definition if you may, yeah, that after plugging in some feedback which is very, very general, if the system turns out to be passive with this y and with this sort of drift system, then uh, and with this new control v, not the old control u, but the new control v, then the system is feedback passive, okay. And to illustrate this, we actually look at now one rather serious and useful example, yeah. This is the control of robot dynamics in joint space, yeah, I mean you are already, uh, you can, you can very quickly get into the uh, controlling a robot, okay, and this is like a, a manipulator, any robotic manipulator will have this sort of a dynamical system, okay, um, we will spend, you know, a couple of minutes trying to understand what the terms are, yeah, uh, anyway some of you might have seen, uh, this sort of model is typically arrived at by uh, using Lagrangian, yeah, those of you who have done any kind of robot modeling will know. Um, so this set of model is arrived at using the you know Lagrangian method, yeah, or Hamiltonian, but typically Lagrangian. Yeah, uh, Q is what is called the generalized coordinates. 
So, if you have uh, you know a robot, uh, you know, I mean, let me see. If you have a robot, which is like you know, has a revolute joint like this, right? And then here there is no revolute joint. But how do I say? Okay. If you look at this picture, what do you see? There are three sort of uh, degrees of freedom, if you may, yeah, uh, or three sort of, um, in, in the sense, um, coordinates. Not degree. Let's call them coordinates. What is this? In order to specify this robot, I will need to specify this angle alpha one. Okay. Then this angle alpha two. Right, so it is like shoulder this, yeah, shoulder and this, right? Alpha one and alpha two, but here uh, which I can't do the third thing, yeah. I'm saying that my wrist can sort of move in and out. It's a linear joint, linear actuator, okay? Linear actuator on one of the arms, yeah. You can see that this is possible. I mean, you can make it out with this guy. Uh, so this is a robot, yeah. So this is one angle, this is the other angle, and this thing can move also. Yeah. You can imagine I can make a robot like this. I mean for many reasons, yeah. Just for fun, if nothing else. Yeah. All right. Now uh, what is uh, funny or odd about this is that um, all coordinates are not angles or all or uh, x, y's. So they're not in the same type of coordinates, if you may. Yeah. They are either angles or positions and so on and so forth. Yeah, but when you do Lagrangian modeling, uh, you can actually look at them all together and you call them generalized coordinates. Yeah, they can be positions, they can be angles. They're all combined in one vector, and this is called generalized coordinates. Okay, that's the uh, reason for naming them generalized coordinates because they can be positions, angles, and so on and so forth. No problem. Okay. Again, in a mechanical system context, you again in electrical system, it can be uh, sorry voltages, currents, and different things. Yeah, completely different things, different units. Yeah, they are combined in one. Yeah, so uh, and Q dot is of course generalized velocities, right? So in this case, it alpha one dot angular velocity and x dot, which is linear velocity. Yeah, so uh, uh, and then you have the system matrices, which is the first and the more important, most important one is the M of Q, which is the inertia matrix. It's called the inertia matrix, and not difficult to uh, sort of compute. Uh, it's it sort of actually captures the inertia of the robotic system. If it moves around this origin, then what is the mass distribution? Typically, this will be a function of the coordinates itself. Yeah, very very uh, in very very unusual circumstances. Will it be um, independent of the coordinates themselves? Yeah, mostly it will be a function of the coordinates, but it will be symmetric positive definite. Inertia is always symmetric positive definite matrices. Okay, then you have the C Q Q dot, which are the centrifugal and Coriolis forces. Okay, again because it's robot and mechanical system, so you know exactly what these are. Yeah, and then there is D, which is the viscous damping. This is like you know if you have these joints. And then there is damping on the joints, yeah, or there is damping in the linear actuator, right? Then here, then there is some viscous damping, and that depend that sort of always scales the velocity. And then finally, you have the g, which is the gravity term. Okay, so this is standard notation. I I don't think even books will change the more. If you go from one text to the other, I don't think even they will even change the symbol of the or the letters also. Hmm? Thankfully. This is one of the more standard notation. M will always uh, signify the inertia. C will always be the Coriolis uh, and the centrifugal and uh, or centripetal, whatever. Uh, then you have the D and the G, hmm? which is the damping and the gravity. Huh? And then you have the control. Finally, yeah, control of course can be, you know, you can actually uh, maybe have a motor here, here. And you can have you know some linear actuator here, pneumatic actuator or whatever. Okay, so this is the control. Okay, 
so this is the this is the system that we are looking at yeah uh, and uh, one of the things that's known for because we have arrived at this via Lagran lagrangian modeling is that m dot minus twice c is a skew symmetric matrix okay this is known for this robotic type system it will always hold yeah this is nothing very unusual it's a system property and what does it mean for a, if if this if a matrix is skew symmetric then the corresponding quadratic form is always zero okay this is again a property of skew symmetric matrices okay so again whenever we deal with uh, practical real systems then we have to identify these properties of the system so typically uh, somebody who's been working on these systems for a while they will know these yeah so whoever designs controllers for these systems they'll always know this there is no uh, two ways about it yeah so m dot minus 2c skew symmetric therefore any quadratic form uh, using m dot minus 2c turns out to be zero yeah okay what is the objective tracking we've until now not done any tracking problem okay so this is the first tracking problem okay what is the objective track a reference q of r again this reference and, and we are doing everything in the joint space by the way yeah in reality you might be um, you know applied guys might be interested in the position of this guy the world position yeah what is called the end effector position yeah not this x not this x but the world xyz okay you might be interested in applications on that okay but you can always reduce it to some trajectory in alpha 1 alpha 2 and x yeah by using the inverse kinematics yeah for any robot this is possible again we have not we are not going into that much detail but the idea is any world space problem can be converted to a joint space problem yeah and so we are doing the control in the joint space only not in the world space yeah now if i want to track a constant reference then i construct an error like this okay and what happens we write the dynamics of the error it comes out to be this guy okay um do you believe me that it comes out to be this guy <laughs> yes ha huh, what is it go ahead there is a g term there yeah what are you saying okay I, i made this a uh, simplified problem <laughs> okay i will huh? i have basically chosen a constant reference so qr is actually a constant so i'm i'm actually doing an easy problem here yeah actual trajectory tracking would be it's a time varying trajectory uh, in that case uh, the trajectory also will have to satisfy an equation like this typically hmm? anyway we will go there later on not right now yeah not right now right now we are doing an easier problem the reference is a constant my angles are at some constant value my linear position is at a constant value i want to go to i want them to go to another constant value that's it okay now if you look at this again q minus qr qr is a constant hmm? so any derivative so left hand side contains only derivatives right so any derivative e double dot is actually q double dot e dot is q dot and gq is just gq nothing changes okay just because i chose a constant reference yeah just to make my discussion in class simple yeah otherwise it'll take a long long time to reduce the problem itself okay so what we want is e equal to 0 to be globally asymptotically stable okay so you see that the dynamics of e and the dynamics of q are the same just because we have a constant reference nothing magical i didn't do anything yeah you are right if there is an actual reference and we'll have to do this gravity will cancel okay we have to do all that those funny things huh? uh, but we are not going there now uh, 
what are we claiming? We are claiming that this kind of a control will give us feedback passivation. What is feedback passivation? It means that after I plug in the control and with some output, I will get passivity. Hmm? So my claim is that this control gives me feedback passivation. It's obvious that the first term is just to cancel this guy. So let's not even worry about it. It's just going to, if I plug in you, it's just going to cancel this guy. Yeah? Then there is a nice negative term in the error. We love these terms, right? Always. It's a proportional control, yeah, if you may. And then I have some new control that I will figure out later on. Yeah? But my aim is to get passivity in this case. Okay? I just want to get passivity. Let's plug in and see what happens. Yeah? If I plug in, this is what I get. Gravity cancels out and the KPE went from here to here. So I just have this system. Okay? Now, I consider this storage function V as this guy. Okay? This is a very standard construction. Yeah? It is just taking uh, notice, by the way, I have not written this in state space form. Hmm? All of you should always be watching these things. I didn't write this in state space form. I am directly working with the double second order dynamics. Technically, it will be nicer if you wrote this in state space form and so on. But because it is pre-multiplied by an m, it is a little bit painful. But you can always do that. You can just write this as e1 dot is e2 and m q e2 dot is whatever. Okay? This would be the state space form. Yeah, where e1 is equal to e. and e2 is equal to e dot. Okay? If I choose that, then I would get a state space form. Let us not worry though. Yeah? Pretty easy. Alright, great. Now, I am saying that this is a very standard construction for a Lyapunov candidate for the robotic system. Very standard construction. If you get a robotic system, try this Lyapunov function, Lyapunov candidate. Okay? Great. Why, why is this a nice candidate? First of all, m is symmetric positive definite okay? for all q. Therefore, this is already a nice positive term. Kp was chosen to be positive definite, obviously. I mean, I don't know if I wrote this here. Really hope. Oh, disappointing. Hmm. Kp in the general case, yeah, this is positive definite matrix, symmetric matrix. Okay? Therefore, this is also a positive choice, nice choice. So, this is actually a quadratic, right? Just a quadratic form. Yeah? And both are positive definite matrices. So, it is almost like x1 square plus x2 square. Yeah? Or k1 x1 square plus k2 x2 square, where k1 and k2 are both positive numbers. It is just the matrix vector extension of that. Okay? Standard Lyapunov function. Yeah? And this is, you should get used to this sort of a construction. If I take the derivatives now of this guy, what happens? This is just e dot m q e double dot. Yeah, I am using the product rule. So, e dot transpose times m q times e double dot, because it is a vector, I am just being careful of the transpose and all that. I, will, I am not allowed to change orders of things and all that mess. Otherwise, it is the same. And the second term, is e dot transpose half e dot transpose m dot q e dot and because there is there is derivative of this also okay you could have done this twice half e double dot transpose m q e dot and half e dot transpose m q e double dot but it turns out to be the same things right because of scalar transpose of scalar is scalar yeah which i made you write yeah this is a scalar quantity so, I can keep taking transposers. So, this is also a scalar quantity. Okay? And then, again, derivative of this is E transpose K P E dot. Yeah, because this is scalar, I can keep flipping, no problem. Same thing comes out. Okay? Great. This I want to be less than or equal to V transpose Y. Alright? This I want to be less than a V transpose Y. Okay? I need you to do this. As you can see, it is the exercise. Now you see, 
I have to plug for E double dot here, right? Which is this. Actually, sorry. I have to plug for n q e double dot here, which is this guy. Yeah, brings in the v, brings in the control, new control v, and then there is e transpose k p e dot. Yeah, which is actually very nice. You will see that it's a nice term. Hmm? So basically, this term contains the new control v. and now what i want you to do as an exercise is choose a output anything is output y such that this quantity is less than equal to v transpose y where v is this new control and then basically you would have achieved feedback passivation not just that i also want you to after you find the output y i also want you to show zero state observability of this system For this v y pair, okay. So uh, this is a very very nice and obviously a relevant example. We already moved into something real, yeah. And uh, you'll also be doing simulations on this, okay, with some real numbers that I will give you, yeah. So uh, please look at this carefully. You'll have enough time. It'll be the next homework. So. You have enough time. Look at this carefully. Understand it very well. If you have any doubts, you ask me. But make sure you understand it very well, so that you uh, are able to do this exercise. Yeah. I mean, if you can crack this theory part, okay. Um, because once you have this output y and this new input v, you know that the control can be just minus phi y, right? Because of the theorem that we have already. Yeah. It's all set. so all you have to do is this show that this is less than equal to v transpose y for some output artificial output that you choose it doesn't have to be you know real okay but again check and see what comes out yeah you will see that something very nice comes out on the left hand side yeah the system this uh the apnov candidate and the system is very nice properties yeah which is why controlling robots is actually uh, i mean designing control uh, control for robots is readily easy yeah so please uh sort of start on this exercise just get yourself a warm start try to understand you know what's going on with these terms and so on yeah and see how you can use these properties yeah to complete this analysis so once you can compute the left hand side properly that's all you need to do once you compute this left hand side properly and carefully after substituting the e double dot you will yourself have some structure like this and then you just have to choose a y because otherwise it will be difficult right you should have a structure that looks like this here okay all right okay cool thank you